Hey everyone, I know some of you may be wondering what this little disc looking thing is on the bottom of my setup. It's the SXAO from Starlight Express. It's an adaptive optics unit, as active optics is when you shoot a laser into the sky and track its movement to get a good idea of your sky conditions. It allows you to actively change the shape of your mirror to counteract those seeing effects. This is not active optics, but rather adaptive optics, and it's hobby level. After a few years of prodding, I'm finally doing an AO versus normal guiding comparison. I would have done it sooner if I had my own yard to experiment in, rather than potentially waste some of my dark sky time when I used to travel to do my imaging. The AO works by rapidly moving a small piece of glass inside the unit in a tilt-tip motion to keep your stars guided, moving as rapidly as possible given guide exposure length and image download times. Ideally, you want to guide on the brightest star you can find in your guider's field of view, because the brighter the star, the lower you can set exposure times. By using subframes, you can squeeze out some slightly faster download times and by extension a faster correction rate. Ideally, the AO is correcting for any tracking errors in your mount and wind. It can possibly correct some low frequency seeing conditions, but it obviously isn't perfect. The goal is to increase your guide rate so that if the star moves out of position, it is quickly moved back multiple times per second rather than waiting 1-3 to three seconds for normal mount guiding. In order to guide, the AO is calibrated along with the mount. If for whatever reason your star travels too far to keep being corrected by the AO, the mount will bump the star back into the center of the AO's field of view. The off-axis guider is placed right behind your AO so it can keep track of how much the AO moved the star. I also put my filter wheel behind that so there aren't as many issues with finding a guide star even when I'm using narrowband filters. With that, I'll show you how it works and we'll see just what an improvement an AO can provide compared to normal mount guiding. Now it's time to see the difference between using an AO and not using one. I did my best to try and keep everything equal, with the only difference being the AO making corrections. I took 8 images from just before I switched off the AO, and I took 8 images with the AO switched off. So here I've applied a stretch to both images. They are the same stretch, yet one of the backgrounds is much darker. This is a single sub with the AO turned off, and this one with it on. And then another. Again, the only processing was just a single histogram stretch. So here are our stacks. They were eight images with the worst image thrown out. Strangely enough, it seems like having the AO on actually helps with noise. The reason for that could be because every time a new image is taken, the AO will recenter the star back to the center of the AO if it's changed position. And again, both of these sets of images were taken back to back, so there shouldn't be any real difference between seeing or transparency or anything like that. Here's the oxygen sets. And again, it looks like having the AO on actually helps reduce the amount of noise. It's possible that when the AO recenters the star after every image, it's acting kind of like a small dither. And again, these images were also taken pretty much back to back.
Some thoughts. The image with the AO data is less noisy on both filters. As I said, it might be acting like a dither. I think the image with the AO has better contrast, and I think that the AO images are actually sharper. Some things that could have caused the AO to have better data were possibly a local light source, maybe there was a car, maybe there were some really thin clouds. I don't think so because I was outside and I was looking up and I'm pretty sure there was no clouds. I think that the images with the AO are sharper. That could be subjective. And again, I don't have a huge sample size of non-AO data. I could just go ahead and try and get more data at some point if I really wanted to, but I think with the amount that I have, it's showing pretty much what I'd be expecting from an entire night of imaging. So what do you think? I think that the AO helps. I don't think that's bias on my part. I think it's, you know, just looking at the actual images that the data coming in with the AO are a little better. As for whether these AO units are worth it, I think that they are more worth it with the longer focal length telescopes. Um, my telescope's a 9-10 millimeter focal length, and that is pretty short compared to some of the other telescopes out there. I think it'd be really cool to throw one of these on something like a Schmidt Cassegrain, because with that super high focal length, you could get some really tiny little planetary nebulas in there, and with the AO, you'd get some pretty good data with it. As for whether this thing's good on shorter length telescopes, I don't think so. I think the longer focal length you have, the better when it comes to these things. Otherwise, you'd be better off just trying to make sure that your mount is tracking as good as possible. So with that, thank you for watching. I'm sorry, McKinza, for waiting about four years to do this, but uh, I finally had the chance to do it. So hope you all enjoyed. Take care now.